Hello and welcome to Arohan Coaching Institute. In our last lecture of Indian Polity, we discussed the Indian Councils Act of 1909. Those who haven't watched the video, please go and watch it once you are done with this lecture. It will take just a few minutes and you will be able to understand it properly. In this video, we will discuss the Government of India Act 1919 or as it is known, the Montego Chan's Ford Reforms. If you still haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to it and give a thumbs up to the video so that we know our videos are helping you in your preparations so without any delay let's get started on 20th august 1917 the british government for the first time declared that its objective was the gradual introduction of responsible government in india the government of india act of 1919 was thus enacted this act came into force in 1921 This act is also known as Montagu Chan's Ford Reforms because Montagu was the Secretary of State for India and Lord Chan's Ford was the Viceroy of India during this period. Now let's discuss the features of this act. It relaxed the central control over the provinces by demarcating and separating the central and provincial subjects. The central and provincial legislatures were authorized to make laws on their respective list of subjects. However, the structure of government continued to be centralized and unitary. It further divided the provincial subjects into two parts transferred and reserved the transferred subjects were to be administered by the governor with the aid of ministers responsible to the legislative council the reserved subjects on the other hand were to be administered by the governor and his executive council without being responsible to the legislative council this dual scheme of governance was known as diarchy it introduced bicameralism and direct elections in the country for the first time Thus the Indian Legislative Council was replaced by a bicameral legislature consisting of an upper house that is the council of state and a lower house which denotes the legislative assembly the majority of members of both houses were chosen by direct election it required that three of the six members of the viceroy's executive council other than the commander in chief were to be indian it extended the principle of communal representation by providing separate electorates for six indian christians anglo indians and europeans it granted franchise to a limited number of people on the basis of property tax or education it created a new office of the high commissioner for india in london and transferred to him some of the functions still now performed by the secretary of state for india it provided for the establishment of a public service commission hence A Central Public Service Commission was set up in 1926 for recruiting civil servants. For the first time it separated provincial budgets from the central budget and authorized the provincial legislatures to enact their budgets. It provided for the appointment of a statutory commission to inquire into and report on its working after 10 years of its coming into force. Now, let's look into the key points of the act. Firstly, it separated the central and provincial subjects. Secondly, it divided the provincial subjects into two parts transferred and reserved the transferred subjects were to be administered by the governor with the aid of ministers of the legislative council and the reserved subjects were to be administered by the governor and his executive council this dual scheme of governance was known as diarchy it introduced bicameralism and direct elections the indian legislative council was replaced by a bicameral legislature consisting one council of state and one legislative assembly Three of the six members of the Viceroy's Executive Council were to be Indian from now on. It provided separate electorates for six Indian Christians, Anglo-Indians, and Europeans. It granted franchise to a limited number of people on the basis of property, tax, or education. It created a new office of the High Commissioner for India in London. A Central Public Service Commission was set up in 1926. It separated provincial budget from the central budget. It provided for the appointment of a statutory commission to inquire into and report on its working after 10 years of its coming into force. So that's it for now. Please go and watch other videos that we have uploaded and kindly like, share and subscribe to our channel so that we know our videos are helping you in your preparations. That's all for now. Thank you so much.